Hello, and thank you for joining us today for today's OMS COVID-19 commun community webinar. We value your time during this public health crisis. As we respond to the COVID-19 pandemic, OMS is hosting these webinars to ensure that our communities are fully up to date on our forward stance against the virus, as well as steps you can take to combat COVID-19 in your daily lives. Today's speaker will be Donna Jacobs, our Senior Vice President of Government, Regulatory Affairs, and Community Health. Donna has a long career of service in Maryland, dedicated to healthcare policy issues, um, and has played a critical role in our COVID-19 response, coordinating community health programs, and developing outreach strategies related to mental health. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to evolve, Misinformation has become rampant. Today, Donna will be addressing many of the common myths and rumors surrounding this new disease and will provide trusted resources that you can rely on. If, at any point during today's webinar, you have a question or concern, please submit your question using the chat feature um, on the right side of your computer screen or telephone. You can also use the chat feature to submit something that you may have heard about COVID-19, but aren't sure whether or not it's true. We will respond to all of your questions in the next few days, and some of your questions may make it onto our next webinar. At this point, it's my honor to introduce Donna Jacobs. Donna? Good afternoon, and thank you, Chris, for that kind introduction. As well, thank you to everyone who is joining us today. COVID-19 and the resulting disease are brand new, which means that our understanding of what COVID-19 is has evolved very quickly over the last several months. And there's a lot of information circulating about the disease, some true and some not so true. This may be an extremely scary time for you and your family, and it can be hard to cut through the noise and know exactly what to believe but I want you to know that the University of Maryland medical system is here for you and here to help you sort through the facts and the fiction. As Chris mentioned, today we'll be discussing many of the common misunderstandings, disinformation, and myths about COVID-19, and arming you with the tools and the information necessary to keep you, your families, and our communities safe. Our ultimate goal is that you remain healthy. Summer. Many of us are experiencing what experts call COVID-19 fatigue, especially as the Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of summer, kicks off today. But it's important that together we all continue to take affirmative, proactive steps to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We each have a collective responsibility to protect one another. Clearly, summer fun this year will be different, than it's been in the past, and it will require thoughtful safety measures. Here are a few. Please do not host or attend large gatherings with others, including friends and family. Please maintain at, six, at least six feet of physical distance between yourself and others. We know very well that being in close proximity with other people is a high risk factor for COVID-19 and amongst maybe the highest of all the risk factors. Please do wear a mask when indoors in public spaces or outdoors when it's not easy to maintain a safe physical distance. Wash your hands frequently and often for 20 seconds. And when soap and water are not re readily available, use hand sanitizer that's made of at least 70% alcohol um, instead of soap and water. If you are going out and you want to enjoy outdoor activities, please take extreme care to avoid crowded gatherings, as I've said, and be especially cognizant when in parks, around swimming pools, and at the beaches. While COVID-19 may not transmit through water, it's the activity around the pool and other things that you might be engaged in that may be problematic. If you do choose to travel, and as you go about your summer activities, Please be aware of the local rules and restrictions. They differ within the state of Maryland, and they may differ from state to state. 
Before we dive into the individual questions, I want to be sure that you have resources that you can turn to as trusted and reliable and which are up to date on the COVID-19 virus. The University of Maryland Medical System, or UMS, has established a dedicated website on COVID-19 that can be found at www.ums.org slash COVID. This website has an incredible amount of information, including tips on prevention of COVID-19, treating illness at home, and suggestions on managing your health and wellness. The website even covers topics like coping with financial stress, and provides links and phone numbers to connect you with various outside resources, including crisis hotlines. UMS also has a nurse call line staffed by registered nurses 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that you can call to discuss your concerns or possible symptoms. And that call line can be reached by dialing 1-888-713-0700. One, one. Also, during this trying time, caring for your mental health is especially important, and it is just as important as caring for your physical health. UMS has hosted additional community webinars through our Not All Wounds Are Visible series regarding mental health and specifically COVID-19. These webinars have covered, covered topics such as how to manage your stress, helping children cope with COVID-19, and how to stay connected while physical distancing. You can find and replay any of these webinars at ums.org slash not all wounds are visible. Excuse me, ums.org slash not all wounds. And more uh, health, mental health webinars are upcoming. You can also find updated and accurate information from the Maryland Department of Health by visiting coronavirus dot maryland dot org and as well you can go to the website for the centers for disease control and prevention the cdc by visiting cdc dot gov slash coronavirus as chris mentioned you can also ask questions during this webinar using the chat feature to the right and ums will provide written responses within the coming days we want to help so please reach out Now let's talk about some of the myths and the misinformation. Myth number one, I don't need to take preventive measures because COVID-19 is only harmful to older adults or people with underlying medical conditions. I've even heard that kids are immune. This, folks, is false. Anyone can contract COVID-19 and everyone reacts differently to the disease. People with underlying medical conditions or older Americans may be more at risk for contracting COVID-19 and perhaps more at risk for severe disease, but young and otherwise healthy patients can and also do suffer harmful effects from COVID-19. Please don't be mistaken. In fact, as early as, uh, as late as this week, more than 50% of confirmed cases in Maryland with COVID-19 were people under the age of 50. Children are also affected by COVID-19, and health experts are exploring the link between the virus and a rare inflammatory syndrome that seems to be uh, spreading amongst children right now. I don't say all of this to scare you, but there are steps that you can and should take to prevent the transmission of COVID-19, such as practicing physical distancing, washing your hands, these are all worth repeating, frequently for at least 20 seconds, and wearing a mask in public. Myth number two, summer is approaching and warm weather kills the virus, so we no longer need to practice social distancing. Not true. As summer approaches and Maryland moves toward reopening and recovery, we know it's tempting to head to the beach or fire up the grill for a backyard barbecue with friends, but this is a brand new virus, and we don't know all of the effects that the warm weather will have on the prevalence of the disease in our communities. Experts predict that the curve, or also known as the frequency and the impact of the disease, may not be just a simple up and down or a sharp sharp drop, but rather we may have a series of smaller spikes and peaks that continue through the summer and into the fall. 
and especially so as people begin to move around more and the state begins to move further toward long-term recovery. To support our state's recovery or reopening, we must continue to make smart choices and to take steps necessary to reduce the spread of the, of the disease. As Dr. Marcosi, the head of the Incident Command uh, Strat Center at UM, and a member of Governor Hogan's Coronavirus Task Force recently said, to continue to flatten the curve as we, Mar to continue to flatten the curve, we as Marylanders need to be consistently making the right choices. So folks, we cannot let up. I know that many people, including many in the faith communities, have been anxious to return to quote unquote normal. And that includes returning to religious services. It's important that we continue to take preventive measures, even at church, even always in our communities, and that where we can, we use technology, perhaps even to live stream services at home. We know this is, is tiring, and we know that so many of you are feeling so over it, but we're all in this together, and prevention is critical. Myth three, if I'm not sick, I don't need to wear a mask. False. Some people who have coronavirus are asymptomatic, meaning that they have no symptoms at all. And some people have no symptoms at the beginning stages of the disease. Many studies have shown that people who are asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic are often highly contagious and can infect others without ever knowing it. As a result, the CDC recommends that everyone wear a mask even one that's homemade, when in public to help prevent the spread of the disease to others. There are a few exceptions, children under the age of two, people with breathing problems, perhaps, and people who cannot remove a mask on their own without assistance. In Maryland, face masks are absolutely required when riding in public transportation or inside any retail location. Wearing a mask is particularly important where maintaining a distance of six feet or more from other people is difficult, such as the grocery store or pharmacies and the like. But be aware, wearing a cloth mask does not and should not replace all of the other efforts that I've spoken about to maintain adequate physical distance. You should do both. You do not need to wear, again, a, ma a medical or surgical grade mask. A simple cloth or homemade mask will do. And you can find links for instructions on making your own mask at ums.org slash COVID. Myth four, once you've had COVID-19, you're now immune and can't get sick again. This virus, again, is new. And scientists and medical professionals do not know exactly what the presence of antibodies may mean in terms of developing an immunity to the virus or how long that immunity might last. Antibodies may reflect that someone has had the disease or been exposed to the disease, but it is not yet known whether someone will not get COVID-19 again or a second time. UMS is working actively with our partners at the University of Maryland to better understand this issue. In the meantime, it's important to just be cautious and take preventive measures. They are our best weapons against COVID-19. Myth five, getting a flu shot can prevent COVID-19 or receiving a flu vaccine increases your chances of getting COVID-19. Let me say those two statements directly contradict one another, but both statements have been spread in our community. There is no immunization right now to treat COVID-19 virus. Although this is something, again, that the researchers across the country and at the University of School of Medicine are working on. That being said, we do know that the prevalence of this disease will look, we do not know, excuse me, what the prevalence of this disease will look like in the fall as the flu seasons begin. So it's important to keep yourself and your family safe and well by getting a flu vaccine and continuing to take precautions against COVID-19. I can tell you, however, that the flu shot does not increase your chances of contracting COVID-19. 
Myth six, there are homemade remedies that you can take to prevent or treat COVID-19. Let me emphasize, there are no medicines that you can take right now at home that can prevent or cure the COVID-19 virus. Do not take anything that claims to prevent or treat COVID-19 unless you're following orders from a licensed medical professional. Please always consult with your physician if you believe you may have COVID-19 or have additional questions or concerns or call the um, nurse call line. What you may be able to do at home is treat the symptoms by resting and staying hydrated. And if you're sick with non-urgent COVID-19 symptoms, please stay home and stay away from other members in your family and be sure that shared spaces, if any, are cleaned and disinfected regularly. Myth seven, it isn't safe to seek care at a hospital for non-COVID-19 medical issues. This is particularly important. No matter what happens, our hospitals are here for you. Our doors are always open, and we want to ensure that you have access to emergency care when you need it. We've implemented extra precautions to make sure that our hospitals are safe during this pandemic period for both our patients and our staff. Let me emphasize, if you are having chest pains, trouble breathing, or high fever, or any other symptoms that indicate a serious illness, including heart, heart attack or stroke, please call 911 or come directly to the emergency department. department. Miss eight, contact tracing isn't necessary and is just a governmental intrusion into my privacy. Contact tracing is part of Maryland's strategy to reduce the spread of COVID-19. In fact, it's one of the four building blocks that Governor Hogan has set out as critical in reopening Maryland. Contact tracing works by determining where a person with COVID-19 may have been in the days or weeks prior to a confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19 and identifying with whom they may have interacted. Those who have been in contact with someone with COVID-19 are asked to take action to prevent the spread of the disease, such as self-isolation, and to monitor their symptoms. If you receive a call from a contact tracer, they'll ask you about your health or COVID-19 symptoms. They'll never ask for financial information or personal details unrelated to COVID-19. Contact tracers take extreme measures to protect the privacy of people infected with COVID-19 and to follow privacy regulations. You can always feel free to ask a contract tracer, contact tracer for information to verify their identity if you're uncertain who they are. It's important that you help contract tracers do their job for the health and safety of your family and the health and safety of others in our community. We have received so many words of thanks and so many thoughtful gifts. And if you'd like to be amongst those and share information, the best way that you can say thanks to our heroic healthcare workers and those on the front lines is to, and to, is to help reduce the spread of disease by continuing physical distancing, washing your hands, and the other uh, measures that I've spoken about here today. But if you'd also like to leave a message of gratitude for our employees, I encourage you to visit our digital bulletin boards at the address displayed on your screen. These messages encourage our staff as they all work to keep our families and our communities safe and healthy. Thank you again so much for joining us today, and I hope that this information gives you the tools and information necessary to combat COVID-19 myths and mis misinformation. Please remember to stay safe and healthy this Memorial Day weekend and throughout the summer. Chris? Thank you, Donna. And Donna, thank you for um, sharing all of those great resources and information. Um, we also want to thank all of the participants in today's webinar very much for joining us. Uh, we hope that you will stay connected uh, you will find 
our social media channels displayed on the screen right now, and hope that you will sign up for emails at ums.org slash email. Uh, also want to remind you um, that we have the UMS COVID-19 response website, which again, the, the, the address for that is ums.org slash COVID. A lot of great information there that's, that's valuable for um, any community member. Um, another reminder, we also have our nurse call line, which is completely free and available to anyone in the community. That number is 1-888-713-0718. We are grateful for everything that you are doing to keep yourself, your loved ones, and our community safe, and it makes a big difference for all of us at all of our hospitals. So on behalf of Donna Jacobs, thanks again for joining us, and have a great holiday weekend.